Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, we're not actually going to do any flying. In this video, we're going to uh, do a little bit of learning. Got a question from a guy today, in fact, and today's Friday, uh, November 1st, 2013, by the way. Got a question from a guy who was asking me how to move the uh, Falcon 9 to a different base. Uh, he has a little bit of problems with uh, Cape Canaveral for some reason in his installation, and I'm, I'm not sure what that's all about, and I'm not going to try to diagnose that problem. But he was wanting to know how to move uh, the Falcon 9 from uh, KSC to uh, Wide Awake International or Carl Sagan Space Center. So I thought it would make for an interesting video to uh, kind of show how to do that. So let me switch over to the big view here. Now, for starters, I'm going to have to assume, obviously, that you have Orbiter 2010 installed and working, that you have the SpaceX stuff installed and working, and that you have Wide Awake International. We're not going to go into how to install all that stuff. So let's start with uh, going to one of the default scenarios that comes with uh, SpaceX. That way we're all on the same page. So go into the uh, SpaceX folder, Dragon, and then pick uh, Falcon 9 Dragon, and probably Cargo is a good one and then hit Launch Orbiter. What we're going to do is we're going to use the Scenario Editor to take the Falcon 9 rocket launcher from the uh, L-pad that comes with SpaceX, and we're going to move it over to Wide Awake International. But there are some things to know. Uh, it's not quite just a matter of moving the vessel. There's a little bit more to it. <clears throat> now, for starters, one thing you're going to want to do, when the scenario comes up, press G to remove the service tower. Now the reason that we need to do this is because the Falcon 9, when this scenario starts, there's actually a configuration option in uh, the scenario file that basically tells the Falcon 9 launcher that, this, that the uh, service tower is attached. So if we leave the service tower in the, in, the, in the original position and then we move the Falcon 9, the Falcon 9 is going to think that the service tower is still attached. Now we can change that in the scenario file, but it's easier if we just start off by uh, opening the scenario and then pressing G to remove the service tower. That way, when we move the Falcon 9, it knows that the service tower is not attached. So now that we've done that, let's uh, control F4 to bring up the scenario editor. And the Dragon up here, it's attached to the Falcon 9, so we don't have to move both of these pieces. We just have to move the Falcon 9, and then since the Dragon's attached, it'll come with it. So Falcon 9, edit, and let's go to uh, location. And we're going to go to the surface base and Wide Awake International. And here we are. We've got the Falcon 9 moved, but uh, you'll notice that it's not in a very good spot. It's kind of sitting here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, let's start by going back a bit here and to the date, and let's just move the time forward a bit because currently it's kind of in the middle of the night here at Wide Awake, and we can't see very well. So let's bump the hour uh, forward or backward. Let's just go backwards a little bit. There we go. And now we've got... Uh, the day so we can see what we're doing. So we'll go back to the Falcon 9, edit, location. And what we, the way we move the Falcon 9 around the base is pretty easy. Uh, we just need to adjust the latitude and the longitude. Now there are two launch locations that we could use. There's this one over here. I think this one's probably better suited for uh, larger launch vehicles. And then we have this one over here. This one seems to work better, uh, at least cosmetically. It just looks better, in my opinion, than, than this one does. So let's move the Falcon 9. Here it is. Let's just adjust the lat latitude and longitude. We'll start by using these bigger arrows. And that's the wrong way. You can see as I'm going here, we're getting farther away. So let's just go this way. And now let's bump this one until we get it kind of over here in the general vicinity. There we are. Now let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little better. And that's the wrong way, so we need to go back a bit. Now you'll notice that uh, as I move the Falcon 9 using these large arrows, it's just moving it too much all at once. You know, there it's going there, 
you know, we're past the pad, and then if we go this way, uh, if we go the other way with it, we're too far. So basically now we need to start using these smaller arrows for a finer level of control. So we can kind of move it here, maybe zoom in a little bit. And the, the goal here, what we're trying to do is we just, it doesn't actually matter, by the way, where you have the rocket at. Uh, it'll work. But cosmetically, we would like it to be right here in the center of this grill. So that's what we're trying to do here. Now we can adjust these. And it'll actually get to a point where these arrows aren't enough of an adjustment. Oops, that's too much. So there we're kind of centered. And now let's go with this one. And you can see now we're pretty well where we want to be, but obviously we're a bit far to the left and we're a bit too far up. So we need to bring it down a little bit. It gets to this issue though with these arrows that they are, they're not fine of enough of an adjustment and you start have to editing the numbers. But let's get it as close as we can using these arrows. That's not the right way. Okay, that's about as good as that's going to get. So now we'll work on the left, right. And about like that. Well, you can see that we're really not getting any improvement at this point. I find with this launcher, uh, with this pad in particular, it kind of helps actually if you flip it upside down and you look at the bottom of it. You'll notice if we do that and we kind of maybe zoom in a bit, we can see pretty well the alignment. And we can see now the boosters are too far to the right. They're kind of inside this mesh. And then up here, they're, it's not really lined up very well top to bottom. So let's start editing. Uh, let's see what we need to do here. So we can see that, let's just look at these last two digits, 40. So 40 is too much that way, and 50 is too much that way. So you can see this is 50. And if I go up, it's 40. So we want somewhere between 40 and 50. So let's go 45 and hit Apply. And now, to me, it still looks like it's a bit too far down. So let's bring it back a little bit. 44. Let's try 43. And to me, that looks like it's pretty well centered. We'll maybe look at that again in a moment. Now let's work on the left, right. Again, let's look at the latitude, this uh, 50. Okay, that's clearly the wrong way. So 50 or 60. So somewhere between 50 and 60. 60 is too far this way and 50 is too far that way. So let's split the difference and go 55. And now it's too far this way, so let's bring it back to 50, uh, let's go 53. And uh, that's pretty well centered. You could even go with that if you wanted. But if you just really want to be really particular about it, zoom in, take a look around, maybe pan the camera a bit that way, a bit that way. I think we can center it a little bit better. Let's maybe try 50. Uh, 50, 535, let's see what that does. I like that. That looks to me like it's pretty well perfectly centered left to right. Now let's look at top to bottom. And I would say it's pretty good right where it's at. We don't need to do a finer level of adjustment. So let's say we're done, done, close that out, zoom out a little bit. And let's flip things back over so we can actually see uh, the rocket. Now, before we save this, let's do a couple things. Uh, let's press F1 to get inside the uh, flight deck or whatever you want to call it for the for the Falcon 9. And let's set up our MFDs just in some sort of default. Uh, some kind. Of, let's give our MFDs a default. In other words, when I launch this scenario. I don't want to have myself targeting Habana. That's pointless. I'm here at Wide Awake and I'm going to the ISS or something. Why in the world do I need to target Habana? So let's target no base. And I'm probably going to go to the ISS. Uh, if not, then maybe you could go target no orbit. But I think probably from this launch, if I were to do this, I would want to have the ISS selected. I don't like having orbit uh, ground track on most of the time. Most of the time I want orbit plane. So I'm going to go orbit lines, orbit plane, say OK. And the zoom level here isn't very good, so I'm going to press track to track my current position and just zoom all the way out. And then I can actually turn track back off. So I have this MFD set up in a way that, to me, this makes sense. This is a good default. Let's look over here, projection as ship. And uh, the distance readout is PEA, APA in the frame of reference. 
probably doesn't matter, but we can change it to equatorial if we want. Now I'm going to press F1. And the last thing I'm going to do before I save my scenario is I'm going to figure out where I want the camera to be when I load up the scenario by default. In other words, I don't want the camera to, I don't want, I don't want to load Orbiter and have the camera look like this when it starts. And I don't want to load Orbiter and have, you know, the camera look like this. So when I start Orbiter, how do I want the camera to be positioned? So I'm going to set that like, probably maybe like this is good. That looks good to me. So everything is in a good default configuration. Now I'm going to press Control S to save the scenario. Now let's exit out and let's just see if there's anything that we need to do to that scenario before we, uh, before we're completely done. So I'm going to my quick save folder and I'm opening that scenario. Now here, uh, I don't like having this uh, junk information in the description, so I'm going to delete that out. And if we scroll down here a little bit, we can actually get rid of this L-pad section. Since we're not using that uh, launch pad from KSC, there's no point in having that in there. So we can just, everything between L-pad and end, we can delete that out and make sure we get rid of the white space. And we have that. Now, uh, just as an FYI, this configuration option in F9, uh, this is the Falcon 9, this config line, this one right here, this is what tells the Falcon 9 if the service tower is detached or not. If this is set to zero, then it means that the service tower is not attached. If it's set to one, then it means that the service tower is detached, and that's actually what we want. We want this to be set to one uh, so that the... Uh, so that when we load the scenario, it doesn't think that the service tower is still attached. The other thing that I like to change is this here. This is F Malt. It stands, I believe, for Fault Multiplier. If you plan on doing manual launches with the SpaceX, there's a very, very high probability, probably like 90% or higher, that you will experience a failure. I think that's a bit ridiculous. So I actually set the fault multiplier to zero, and that just means that I will have a 0% chance of failure. If you're not going to do a manual launch, if you're just going to use the autopilot, you can probably go ahead and just leave that set to one if you want. Um, personally, just again, I like to do a lot of my launches manually, and I don't want to have a 90% chance of failure. So I'm going to set that to zero. And that's it. The scenario is all set up. So let's hit uh, save. and. Let's Let's just load it one time just to make sure that it's doing what we want it to do. And then, of course, uh, you would want to go through and remove the scenario out of your quick save and put it somewhere else. I have this uh, zero, 00 my scenarios. This is where I put all my scenarios that I make. So once I was done with this, I would move it. I would go you know, into the Windows folder stuff and I would move it uh, into one of my, my scenarios. So let's load that up real quick. Uh, just get that to second to load and we just want to check and make sure that uh, the camera position is good that we're happy with it we want to make sure that the mfds are set up in some logical default uh, we want to make sure that the uh, service tower stuff's not going to be an issue and okay so again we loaded the scenario and this is what it looks like by default i'm happy with that press f1 to get inside and see these are how my mfds are set up i don't have to reset a bunch of stuff and now let's uh, just test to make sure that we can launch right away. If the service tower thing was an issue, then we're not going to be able to launch. So let's press the plus key and hold it. And we can launch without problem. You can see there the effects. Everything's good. And we're all set. We're launching with a 90 degree heading because we didn't, you know, we had the uh, heading set for the location. So that's all there is to it. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button down below. Uh, leave me a comment, something like that. And if you like the uh, content that I have here on this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Also, be sure to check out my Facebook page because you get to see things that I don't get to post here in my YouTube channel, other articles, other videos, and things like that. And I will see you in the next video.